right, hi everyone, and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks on this election day evening. I posted on social media earlier a picture of my, you know, feet kind of up on the desk. It's nice to be a TV weather guy on election day when the weather's quiet like it is tonight, because while the newsroom is busy, and they're going to have a very busy evening and overnight and even into tomorrow, of course, uh, in the weather business, election day is a day for some free pizza in the newsroom. There's always pizza on election day and nobody really uh, cares that much about what you have to say because you're not dealing with the election. So yeah, it's a good day to be the uh, weather guy or weather girl today, a meteorologist in other words. And uh, on this election day, uh, we did have a pretty cool thing to check out first thing this morning. Of course, if you were up early, uh, we advertised this several days uh, in advance. It was a uh, an eclipse this morning, a lunar eclipse. Now this picture does not capture the eclipse, but Doug from Canfield was practicing uh, his uh, lunar photography before the eclipse uh, early this morning and caught some geese flying across, kind of photobombing, if you will, the uh, moon. So thanks to Doug uh, for sharing that picture. And thanks to everyone who shared pictures on social media and sent us uh, emails and submitted on the Storm Tracker 21 app pictures of the blood red moon at the start of the day today. You'll have to pardon me if I stop occasionally for a drink of water. I, I've still got a tickle in my throat, fighting a little bit of a, of a cold this week. I had to... Uh, call out sick yesterday, which is something I very rarely do, but uh, just the, the voice was not happening yesterday, and today yeah, it's still a little bit of a uh, of a struggle to talk without the uh, without giving in to the temptation to, to cough a little bit. So I'll, I'll try to keep this video fairly short. But in the meantime, uh, it was a nice sunset this evening. I captured a quick t uh, time lapse of the western sky this evening from our transmitter tower on the south side of Youngstown. Just a few jet contrails and a few wispy cirrus clouds in the sky. Early this evening, we're into standard time now, so of course the sun, <coughs> pardon me, the sunset is uncomfortably close to 5 p.m. All right, kind of a rarity in effect for tomorrow, the uh, National Weather Service offices in Pittsburgh and down towards Charleston in West Virginia did hoist uh, fire weather warnings or red flag warnings for a good chunk of uh, southern Ohio and parts of West Virginia for tomorrow. It's going to be a, a dry and mostly sunny day. The relative humidity values will be quite low. It's not going to be real windy, but a little bit of a breeze, and with relative humidity values in the teens, it's not going to be a day to uh, burn leaves or, <coughs> pardon me, anything else. So uh, a, a fire weather warning issued not far to our south. Zooming out and taking a look at the country this evening, I'm going to stop for water. <laughs> <coughs> Thankfully, I got through uh, my weather cast on, on the news this evening without having to cough, but maybe not so lucky on weather geeks this evening. Uh, your eye is drawn to two things on the national radar this evening. One out along the west coast, raining and mountain snow, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and then up into the uh, mountains of the Sierras and into the Great Basin as well. And down here is a tropical system. We had kind of a, a quiet month of October in the tropics, but a, a late season storm. This is Nicole getting set to impact the Bahamas <coughs> overnight. And uh, Nicole uh, for a while has been a, a subtropical storm. It's, it's, it has more tropical characteristics to it now. So more of a traditional tropical storm. It may even be a category one hurricane at some point before it makes landfall along the east coast of Florida between, say, Fort Lauderdale and Melbourne uh, Thursday early in the morning and then bring some uh, heavy rain and wind at times to Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville and then uh, starts cruising off to the north in a weakened state at the end of the week and into Friday night. And that will have implications on our weather as we head towards Friday, but in the meantime, another beautiful day coming up on Wednesday. Thursday looks good, although high clouds will... <coughs> Pardon me. Increase from the south as we go into the afternoon. Then on Friday, yeah, we've uh, ramped up the rain chances for Friday. It's a it's a mortal lock now. It's just going to rain pretty much all day. Some of this rain could be locally heavy. This is remnant moisture from Nicole, and also we have a cold front coming our way. This is the front that's going to be a pattern changer for us as we head towards the upcoming weekend. Some of our medium range models here. This is kind of an area wide average. All of our medium range models here showing at least an inch and, and even up to two inches again as a region-wide average i think there will be some higher amounts especially in areas south and east of youngstown the closer you are to wheeling steubenville over to pittsburgh maybe altoona up towards dubois <clears throat> uh two inch plus amounts will be more and more common i think as you head into that corridor could this make for some flooding 
maybe at some localized areas, but this isn't going to all come at once. This isn't a summertime thunderstorm situation where you get two inches of rain in an hour. This is going to be an inch to two inches of rain over 12 to 15 hours. And the ground is pretty dry. Of course, we haven't had a lot of rain in recent weeks. So I'm not real concerned about a lot of flooding across the area, but there could be some, some localized problems Friday and into Friday night. Then look at this. This is the six to 10 day outlook. It's not often you see absolutely no areas in the lower 48 covered by a uh, elevated chance of warmer than average weather. The whole country is pretty much painted in this blue color, some shade of blue, and the heart of the cold in the six to 10 day period will be nearby and just off to our west. This is gonna be a period marked by a lot of days with highs in the 30s and 40s when we should be in the 50s. I think we will see some snowflakes at times starting on Sunday and taking us into parts of next week. And this colder pattern has some legs. I think it'll be around through about Thanksgiving. I'm seeing some signs on the longer range modeling that the cold will, will break around Thanksgiving and may take us into that first week of December. And we'll have more updates on that coming up. And of course, we'll be talking a lot about December, January, and February in my annual winter forecast coming up in a little more than a week. Hard to believe we are now only nine days away. It's uh, debuting Thursday evening, the 17th of November. I'm just putting the uh, finishing touches on the forecast now. I'm actually going to present this to a kind of a private group this week. Uh, so I do need to finish it this week. And then uh, it'll be publicly available on TV online next Thursday, the 17th. It'll make its debut on TV at 5 and 6. Between the 6 and 11 o'clock newscast, you'll get a longer version online, kind of like Weather for Weather Geeks. And for those who like to read a little bit more or maybe supplement the videos, I'm going to do a blog version as usual, uh, detailing some of the uh, meteorology uh, for those who are curious behind uh, the forecast, why the forecast is what it is. For those who are just more, hey, what's, what's the forecast? I don't need to know anything else. If you're more of a to-the-point kind of a person, uh, that short three-minute TV version will be uh, the one that uh, you want to check out either live on TV or we'll post that online as well. All right, enough talking from me tonight. Hopefully I have a better voice coming up on Wednesday. Thanks for watching tonight, and I will see you back here on Wednesday.